If you subscribe to the channel, you'll get lots of interesting videos like this one. And if you like the video, it'll really help us out. Please comment down below for any other interesting things that also really helps us out as well. Hi, and welcome to another edition of Easy Theory. We're going to answer this question today about whether we can make quicksort run fast. And by fast, I mean it runs in n log n time. So remember what quicksort did. If we have an array right here with some contents in it, and we want to sort it. So what we do is we pick a pivot, which is some element in the array, and all of the elements that are to the left of it are going to be less than the pivot, and everything to the right of it is going to be at least as large as the pivot. And what we do is we recursively work on the two pieces, and therefore we can uh, sort the array because oops, because all of the elements that are bigger than the pivot are on the correct side relative to the pivot and similarly for the things less than it. So the problem with it is suppose that the pivot is uh, the smallest uh, element of the array. Well, if that's the case, then we're gonna only we're gonna have n minus one elements on one side. So if this is the case, so if we pick a bad pivot every time, then the runtime to sort n things using quick sort is well we we have to sort n minus one things once. So t of n minus one. And it took linear time to be able to move through that whole array to move everything to the right or to the left, whichever was the case, of the pivot, which is big O of n. And if you solve this, this is big O of n squared. And what I want to do is I want it to run in big O of n log n time, which is a lot less than n squared. And n squared is a lot more. Um, and we already have a sort that does n log n time, which is merge sort. So I want to see if we can somehow get quick sort to match the performance of merge sort. Put into the comments what you think. Why is it called quick sort if the naive implementation has things running in n squared time? Uh, so there's a very good reason for that, by the way. But let's see what this means. Um, if I do want it to get an n log n time, though, well, what do we need to do? We need to have two sides that are roughly equal to each other. If we can make them as equal as possible, then we have the performance of merge sort because we have two sides of length n over 2, and O of n time, that's not going to change. And so we have exactly the same recurrence as merge sort, and that got us n log n time. So... Uh, what this is really asking us is, is can we find a good pivot, right? Can we find a good pivot? And what does a good pivot mean? So if we um, arrange all of the elements in sorted order, so let's just say that we have, we, we do have an array that's in sorted order, just for the moment. So this is in sor sorted order. Then what is a good pivot? It's going to be um, some element somewhere in the middle. So let's let's just say here. Uh, and let's say that it is in sorted order. So that means roughly half of the elements are on one side and half of the elements are on another. It actually turns out that as long as a positive fraction of the elements are on one side, uh, on both of the two sides, then that's all we need. So if we have some constant alpha times n elements on one side, and uh, 1 minus alpha times n on the other side, where um, alpha is a constant, and it's not either 0 or 1. It's, it's a, an actual constant in between. Um, so what are we going to actually do here? Um, we, if we can get alpha to be exactly 1 half, then that is the problem of finding the pivot to be the median. So uh, let's actually do that. So let's uh, try to find 
the median quickly. So how can we actually find the median of a list quickly? Well, the, the really simple answer is sort the array first and then get the element in the middle. But if we could do that, then, uh, then that doesn't really help us. We already have to have the array sorted to, to first of all. So the problem that we're actually going to talk about then is find the median in an unsorted array quickly without sorting. So how do we find the median in an unsorted, unsorted array quickly without having to sort at all? And that, that just may seem really hard. Well, what, we can actually phrase this as a recursive uh, problem. So, and we can actually generalize it. So let's actually try to generalize this instead. Instead of saying the median, let's say the kth largest uh, element in the array. And the median is the case of when we have n over 2, assuming that there are even number of elements. But, or actually, in this case, odd number. So n over 2 floor in that case. So uh, in here, we're asking, if we have the array sorted, I want to get the kth, um, kth largest or the kth smallest. It doesn't actually matter. It's just I have a particular number k, and I want to find that particular element in uh, linear time. So what do we actually do here? So let's just say that I want to find the kth largest element in an array A, and, uh, and k is the parameter, obviously. So this is an array of n elements, and k here is an integer. So how would we actually find this? Well, let's see. So if the array is of size 1, which is a base case, so if the length of the array is equal to 1, then there's only one element to return. So let's return that one element. And if you are so minded, you can put a of 0 here, the, the one element of a. That's what I am meaning that. That's what I want that to mean. Okay, and then otherwise, what do we do? So the, what we can do is pick some pivot. It, it may not be a good one, but let's just pick some pivot. Uh, P. Okay, so and, and P here in this case is an index. It's not the actual value P, although you could interpret it to be that, but it's an index. So what do we actually do here is we're going to do a recursion. So let's let r equal find, we're going to recursively call find, uh, actually, no, 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 never mind. Uh, I'm doing this backwards. So we're going to actually partition things around this pivot here. So partition the array A around the pivot here. So it's actually kind of similar to quicksort, actually. Um, but let's actually look at this. So if this is the, the, the result of partition, then the kth largest is either to the left or to the right of this guy. Or it is that guy. So if uh, k is equal to r, then we have found the, the, the kth largest element. So, so the partition here is is just saying um, what is the index of the uh, of the pivot point. So here, uh, yeah, yeah. What is the index of the pivot point? So here, if the k is equal to that particular pivot point, then we we found the thing. So return. Oops, no, I should say return. Return a of r. And then it may, well, if it's not equal to it, it's either going to be in the right half or the 
the left half because we partitioned the thing. So uh, else if k is bigger than r, then we're going to uh, return. Uh, now we'll do the recursive call. So find k largest. And here, what I'm going to specify is the right half of A. And what is the number that I want to provide here? Well, here, um, the pivot point is at index R. So then that means that if I want the k uh, largest, let's actually um, say that it's the, the k smallest in this case. Um, because that's how it, I have it in my notes. But you can equally change this for the largest, but this is just how I have it in my notes. So I'm going to change this to smallest. Okay, smallest. Then here, well, if we are looking at the case smallest, then if we've eliminated r elements at the beginning, then I want the k minus r th smallest element um, from this half of the array. So the, the parameter I provide here is k minus r. And uh, so what do I do if, it's, uh, if, if k is actually less than r? Then if I want the k smallest thing, then it's, the k is smaller than where the pivot was, but that, that's not any issue. So I don't, I don't actually have to change the, the parameter k here. Because if it's the k smallest and it's in the left half, then I don't need to change the parameter. So here I'm going to return find k smallest. And the parameter in this case is going to be the left half of A, and the parameter here is K, okay? So let's actually analyze this. And, and so this actually does work because we're basing which recursive case to, to work on based on the index of where the pivot is. And, oh, and so therefore it is correct, but the, what is the running time? But so again, if we pick some really, really bad pivot, we could still have n minus one elements and we'll still get exactly the same recursion as before. So th this actually doesn't change anything. So you may think, okay, why are we even talking about this then if it, does, if it doesn't run any faster? Why do we even care about this? The great thing is this generalizes. So uh, how does it actually generalize? So we're going to actually talk about how to make this faster here. So how can we make find k smallest faster? So uh, I should note here that the runtime currently is big O of n squared. And you can see that because if we have n minus one elements and it takes linear time to make uh, have that happen, then the runtime is going to be uh, just n squared, just like we have discussed before. So it is big O of n squared, but is is there a way that we can actually make this go faster? So it actually turns out we can. So what are we actually going to do here? So uh, here's how this is going to work. So what are we, so how are we going to modify this? What we're going to do is we're going to uh, try to pick a better pivot faster. So how can we make can, fi finding k smallest faster? It's finding a better pivot faster. Because that's the thing that's really killing us here. Um, it's not the time to find a, a pivot that's hard, because that'll always take an, uh, O of n time. That'll never go faster. It's just, can we find a good pivot faster? Which is kind of what we've just been talking about. But let's actually try to analyze this even more. So what I'm going to do is something called the median of medians. 
idea. Which is actually, it seems pretty amazing that it even works, but if you go through the proof of why it is, and I'm not going to do that here, it's actually really, really good. So let's see why. Why is this, uh, what is this idea? Is we're going to take this unsorted array, so this, this guy is unsorted, and I'll make a note of that. So this is unsorted. And what I'm going to do is, and actually let's put more elements in. Because it, it'll actually be better if I have a lot of elements, a, a lot of shown elements here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to group all of these elements into buckets of size 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is a, a bucket... One, and then I'm going to have another bucket. Let's put it in a different color. One, two, three, four, five. So this is bucket two, and this one, three, four, five, bucket three, and, and etc. So then all the way over here, we're going to have, we'll have some bucket over here. Um, It'll be approximately uh, n over 5. And then we may have some uh, um, a bucket with uh, fewer than 5 elements, and that's fine. And so there will be, oh, uh, yeah, so there will be uh, n over 5 ceiling. I should draw that better. n over 5 ceiling buckets. Because if n is a multiple of 5, then I'll have every single bucket of size um, exactly five elements, but it may be that um, there's some extra one, so that's why we always round up. Okay, and then what do I do here? What I'm going to do is because each of these buckets has um, has exactly five elements in it, it's a constant number. Um, it turns out any Odd con uh, constant number, at least five, will work here, but it's typically done with five. But you can do a seven, nine, eleven, etc. All those will work too. Not three, and there's a good reason for that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to find the median of each of these buckets. So this will be bucket n over five, uh, and each one of these here. So this, 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 and this are all the medians of the buckets. Okay. And what I'm going to do, so what do I do with all of these medians right here? I'm going to recursively call with these medians. And you can actually verify uh, via induction or some other type of argument that if you take the medians and find the median of them, you will find the median of the whole list. So here, we're going to recursively call um, some kind of median, uh, medians function with these medians. So with um, M1, M2 up to, yeah, so all of the medians here, okay? And, and yeah, so then we're going to recursively call this, and what we'll output is, from the recursive call, the median. So let's actually try to modify our, our find kth uh, smallest um, algorithm uh, using... Um, yeah, using this procedure. So, yeah, yeah. so uh, one thing I should note here, each of these buckets has constant size, so you can actually brute force them because there's only a constant number of things. So whatever the runtime is with a constant number of things, you can even try all five, possible, five factorial possible orderings of those five elements, and that will still be a constant number of elements to actually pick. Uh, oh, I mean, um, iterations. And so the runtime of that would still always be a constant. 
Okay, so uh, what are we going to do here? So, uh, yeah, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have our find uh, cave largest, oops, largest of the array A and the integer K. Actually, not largest, it's still smallest. I, I got to get used to my own notation. Yeah, so find K smallest. So that's, that's still fine. So uh, here, um, yeah, so uh, not put a step number. I never did that. Um, is, so if the length of A is equal to 1, so then we'll just return that one element. So A of 1. So, so that's no different. So now let's go into the recursive case. So what are we going to do here? We're going to actually call this function with k to be equal to um, the number of medians over 2. So what is the number of buckets? So the num buckets here. We've already worked out to be uh, the length of a over 5 ceiling. So uh, the length of A is, let's just say, N, N over 5 ceiling. That's the number of buckets, just like before. So, so let's let the array uh, M1 through uh, M sub num buckets to be um, all medians of the buckets. You can make this more formal, but I'm not going to go to. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to make this array, which is all of the medians right here. And then what am I going to do with this? So let, let's call this array M in purple. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually find what the median is. So the median is going to be find kth largest. Uh, I mean smallest, with the array, not A this time, but M. The, the array that I feed in this time is M. And then uh, what's, the, what's the number, what's the largest that I want to find in here? I want to find exactly in the middle, which is the number of medians in this array divided by 2. So in this case, that would be the number of buckets divided by 2. So num buckets divided by 2. Again, because we're finding the median of all of the medians. So this is exactly the median of the, of the medians. And so what are we actually going to do here? We're going to do exactly the same thing after this. So uh, except for this one step. So r is going to be the calling the partition function again with the original a, array A, but this time we're going to split the two pieces by the median instead of just some arbitrary uh, pivot that we just picked. Here we're actually picking the median, and so that's guaranteed to be the middle element and both sides are going to be equal size, and so the, uh, the rest here is the same. So it's exactly the same as before. So all of the steps about um, if k is equal to r, if, if k is bigger than r, if k is smaller than r, it's exactly the same thing. Uh, in fact, identical. So uh, why does this actually work? So what we can, what you can actually show is that this will always eliminate a constant number of a uh, constant fraction of the elements of the array in every single recursive call. So let's actually try to think about this. So let's let's phrase it in this way. So yeah, so let's let's actually look at it this way. So I'm going to visualize the array in a different way than you may expect. Uh, let's make this a little smaller so it fits on screen easier, or just move it over. Let's make it a little smaller. 
All right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have each of the Yeah, so each of the columns here is going to be one bucket. Okay. Yeah, so let's actually visualize this. So each of these, so this is going to be B1, this is B2, etc. And I'm going to order these in ascending order. So so the so whatever this is. This is going to be uh, uh, bigger than it, bigger, bigger, bigger th than the previous one. So the smallest element in each of the buckets is going to be in this entry. The next biggest is going to be here. Next biggest is going to be here. Next biggest is going to be here. Next biggest is, and the largest is going to be here, obviously. So what we can notice is that the median is always going to live in the third element because the the number of elements in each bucket is an odd number. And so we don't, if it was an even number, then we would have this business of uh, uh, taking the average of the two middle ones. But here, because it's an odd number, it always is the, me the middle. And that's actually crucial. So the median is always going to be somewhere in here. And, and let's say, and let's actually order these buckets by the median. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to order the buckets by the median of each. So this median on the left is going to be less than or equal to this median, which is less than or equal to that median, etc., all the way through. So the biggest median is over here. Okay. So whatever, so the yeah, so let's actually look at what is the median that we actually picked. Well, if these are in ascending order like this, then the one that I picked is the one in the middle. Let, let's just say, purely for demonstration purposes, it's um, down this column, which means that that is the median that I picked right here. So this guy right here, that is the median. Okay. So then let's actually visualize what the recursive call actually does. Well, let's suppose that it's less than the median. So if it's less than the median, then the only elements that we even will uh, care about are these ones right here. Uh, yeah, yeah, so it's these ones, not including that median. So it's going to be uh, these ones right here. Okay, so uh, what are we actually going to, actually, no, uh, let, let's visualize it differently. So uh, let's suppose that I am trying to find if I have to do the recursive case where it's bigger than this median. Then the only ones that I will care about are the things not in the white area. So if it's bigger than this median that I found, it's either to the right or over here. It, it could potentially be over here. It can't be above it because I've ordered them in ascending order going down. And it can't be to the left of it because I've ordered the medians this way, which means it can't be over here either. So let's actually think, well, what is the percentage of elements that are over here? Well, you can actually work out that in this case, so it, yeah, I should write, write it this way. So if um, K is bigger than R, then the size of the recursive call is going to be um, uh, at most 7n over 10. And you can kind of see why, because um, yeah, because we're effectively eliminating three rows right here, but half of those three rows. And, and, and so it's, it's effectively three-fifths divided by two uh, because we're not removing this half over here. So that means that I'm going to be removing approximately uh, three-tenths of the array, which is why we have uh, 7n over 10 here. Okay, so that is the recursive call for, um, for this 
uh, k's smallest part right here. Oh, uh, is it? Uh, oh, oh no, 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 no. Sorry. So that that's what this part is. And actually, uh, the part about else if k is less than r, then what we can actually show is that the size of the recursive call is going to be at most three n over ten. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So so what can, what can we actually do with uh, this? Well, uh, this recursive call is clearly uh, bigger than this one. And, and so whatever the recursive call is for that particular moment in the function, it's going to be one of these two. So let's just assume it's the worst case every single time. So the time for this is going to be t of 7n over 10. Well, then what, what else do we need to do? Well, what else we need to do is to um, work with all of the, the buckets. And how many buckets are there? There are n over 5 of them. So, in fact, we're going to get an additional t of n over 5 here. And those are the recursive calls. And you may think, okay, why don't you just add these two? It turns out I don't have to because exactly one of the two is going to happen. It, it'll never be the case that I have to do both. So I might as well just assume it's the worst one of the two. Okay, so then we have 7 over, seven over 10. Let's just recap. That's for um, uh, recursively uh, uh, finding when either k is less than r or k is bigger than r. And this one right here is for recursively uh, finding median of medians. Because we had n over 5 medians, and we are recursively working on the medians, and there were n over 5 of those medians. And the time to combine all these, well, let's actually think. Well, to scan through to find, to calculate the median every, on all the buckets takes order n time. So that's just some constant times n. Doing the partition is another constant times n. So it's just a bigger constant times n overall. So we're going to incur an O of n runtime. So I'm actually not going to have a bigger asymptotic penalty each time. It's still order n, it's just a bigger constant. But remember, for big O and such, we don't actually care about the constant. So one thing that you should actually notice here is, let's look at these two numbers. So, so let's look at these two numbers right here. So 7n over 10 plus n over 5 is equal to 9n over 10. So what we can actually notice here is that a constant fraction of the size of the list will always uh, never be considered. Um, not be considered, but is eliminated from the runtime. Because uh, at worst, because remember, this one is the worst thing that can happen. At worst, I'm going to incur a 9, 10, 9 n over 10 penalty. So that means that a constant fraction of the array is being removed at every single point. So what can we actually say about that? Well, since a constant fraction is uh, removed, quote unquote, it's not actually removed, but it's removed from consideration, um, each recursive call then you can actually show, and I invite you to show into the comments, I'm not going to do it here, uh, one can show that t of n is actually big O n log n. And the great thing is, we can actually find the median element by just setting k to be equal to n over 2 which means that we can get the quicksort algorithm to also run in n log n time.
Oh, oh, oh actually, no, no, sorry. Whoops. Uh, I was, I was thinking ahead. T of n is equal to O of n. That was my mistake. T of n, and what that means is T of n for the find kth smallest. And, and what I should say is that T of n is big O n log n. That is for quick sort. Yeah, that, that was entirely my mistake. So to find the case smallest, um, it turns out that we can actually do this in a big O of n time because a constant fraction uh, is eliminated from the list. Um, intuitively, why is that true? So if you have a the series 1 plus a half plus a fourth plus an eighth plus dot dot dot, each of the terms is, is half of the original, so it's a, a constant fraction less than the, uh, ori than the original one, the one previous to it. And this is what is called a geometric series. So this is a geometric series. And because it's a geometric series, it always converges to a, uh, a constant value. So in this case, it happens to be 2. But you can actually figure out, based on a geometric series, what the constant actually it, it, it converges to. So remember, a geometric series, each term is a constant fraction of the other one, or, or constant multiple, but because it's a constant fraction, it will um, it'll always converge, as long as the fraction is less than 1, strictly less than 1. So uh, that's intuitively why we have... Um, big O of n here is a ginormous constant compared to the one that k smallest individually will get um, for each recursion level, but overall it's still a constant and so therefore it's big O of n. And so the constant it, for quicksort is ginormous, but it's still in fact a constant. Okay, so hopefully that was interesting. Leave uh, down into the comments below, what else do you think of this? The thing that amazes me is that um, the runtime here has nothing to do with k whatsoever. So as long as I give you k in advance, you can figure out the medi that the k smallest or the k largest, if you want, in linear time. You don't have to sort the array to start with. You don't have to do anything to the array other than finding the median of medians and using that to find the the k smallest or k largest or whatever you want. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave additional comments down below. As always, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many links in the video description if you want to contribute additionally, such as our Patreon or PayPal or Discord server. And as always, I'll see you next time.